The ABC this week had a message about jihadists. As the head of ASIO says, don't confuse those extremists with the many peace-loving Muslim Australians. But David Irvin was at pains to point out that it was grossly unfair to blame the majority of Muslim Australians for the views of a handful. Very true. But then this very same ABC program invited on an extremist as if he did indeed speak for many Muslims. Uthman Bada speaks for Hizbut Tahrir, an Islamist group that's banned in parts of Europe. And he's one of more than 50 Muslim leaders and organisations who've publicly condemned the government's plans as discriminatory. Well, why does that only apply to Muslims? Jews go abroad in large numbers annually. Uh, they train and fight with the IDF. We've seen what the IDF is capable of doing. Now, that's actually false. The government's proposed laws won't apply just to Muslims. But why is the ABC even giving Hizbut Tahrir a platform to pose as the voice of Islam when its leader here last month preached hatred of Jews? Why did the ABC give this platform to an organisation which last month marched in Sydney demanding an Islamic caliphate from Gaza to Lakemba? <laughs> Joining me is Shari Marks, a media editor of The Australian. Shari, should the ABC have given Hizbut Tahrir such a prime time platform? Look, I think there is a place to interview some of the more extremist groups. But if, as a journalist, you're going to do that, it has to be a very tough interview. It's got to be a grilling. Otherwise, you're simply giving them a platform to sprout their views. And in this case, in this 7.30 report, it wasn't until halfway through the program when Uthman Badal was actually introduced as a spokesman for Hizbut Patia. Up until that point, he was uh, labelled on the subtitles as as a, an educator. So his views were actually presented as if they might be reasonable and as if they might represent the general Muslim population. And I would imagine that a lot of people in the Muslim community would be horrified to think that he was being held up as their key spokesman. And let's not forget, this is a man who was banned from speaking at the Opera House a couple of months ago because he was going to give a speech that was in defence of honour killings. These are extreme views. You cannot in any shape or form defend the stoning to death of women of any honour killings. But I would have thought too that if you're going to present someone as speaking speaking for uh, Muslims in Australia, you need to actually say the kind of people he purportedly represents. In this case, people who preach hatred of Jews, want a jihad and want to have a caliphate stretching from Gaza and Syria to Australia. You need to put this in context because otherwise you're just legitimising one guy above all the moderates out there. That's exactly right. And the moderates need to have more of a voice. This is going to become an increasing issue because uh, at the moment, as journalists, we're all interested in the pockets of the community where people are waving the ISIS flag and we're going to be examining these issues more and more. So I think the media outlets do need to be really careful that when you go to these groups, when you interview and, and investigate the extreme uh, voices in our society, we need to make sure the audience understands that firstly they don't represent the general Muslim population here in Australia and that secondly these are extreme views and that um, we're not simply giving them uh, as I said a moment ago a platform to for publicity to sprout these views it's it's not appropriate now this might be a related topic the ABC's media watch this week delivered two more attacks on the host Paul Barry's favorite target the Murdoch media uh, one of them was no more than Barry saying he disagreed with Murdoch papers showing pictures from just before the beheading of American journalist James Foley. Now, Shari, why is the ABC so against showing those pictures? Look, poor Barry is basically paid $190,000 a year to uh, pursue his hobby of attacking News Corporation. I think Media Watch would struggle to find content uh, if News Corporation didn't exist, and he extends his hobby to his Twitter feed as well. But 
For this specific example, uh, you're completely right. Um, the ABC and many on the left were highly critical of the publications of images where James Foley had a knife close to his neck. Yet, they saw no problem at all in uh, publishing quite widely um, pictures of civilians in Gaza who, who were dead. Um, and, you know, they, they were even more graphic images, but it's puzzling why they, they were okay for publication, but why these James Foley images weren't. And, uh, you know what, Paul Barry also didn't highlight any of the television stations or the ABC programs that also publish the James Foley images. So I think his bias and his agenda is becoming clearer and clearer for us all to see. I got the impression that uh, one reason the ABC, and it's, it's not just Paul Barry, ABC presenters have been so against these images is they don't want people to draw the obvious conclusion about the kind of barbarity that's happening in the Islamic State and elsewhere that requires a response and an argument about Islam. It's amazing. Uh, Christians have been in absolutely horrific, horrific circumstances in uh, northern Iraq, and yet they've been very reticent to publish images of it. You know, their Twitter feeds are very quiet on it, but when the Israel-Gaza conflict was at its height over the past month, uh, you couldn't escape the sort of um, death porn, if you like. So it, it does suit their political agenda to paint Israel as this brutal oppressor, um, while they're not giving the same prominence to atrocities in other areas. Shari, uh, Julia Gillard has been asked to appear at the Royal Commission into Union Corruption in the next fortnight to explain what she did in the 1990s to create a slush fund for her then boyfriend, Union official Bruce Wilson. And I expect she'll also be asked about claims her renovations were paid for by Wilson, claims she denies. Um, but Gillard told her biographer Jackie Kent that when these allegations were raised by reporter Glenn Mill in 2007, senior press gallery figures were told that they couldn't believe Milne had written the story and said they uh, did not follow it up. And the story just died. What does this say about the press gallery? Look, this is absolutely fascinating. Two journalists, Michael Smith and Glenn Milne, lost their jobs over their attempts to investigate and report on this issue. The press gallery was highly reluctant to go anywhere near the story. We had Michelle Grattan come out at the time and say that Gillard had answered all the appropriate questions. Even Media Watch in 2011 said that uh, she'd answered it multiple times. There was nothing further for her to answer and, and basically saying that the media should die off this story. In fact, she hasn't answered the appropriate questions and this is why she's appearing before the Royal Commission. But it's not just the press gallery's fault. There was a reluctance uh, at editor level and at the very senior levels of media companies to pursue this story because of the immense pressure that Gillard, when she was Prime Minister, was putting on both editors and even CEOs. And when you've got the Prime Minister uh, applying this sort of pressure and It should and have been telling, called out, um, Sherry. It should have been called out. You're absolutely right. Sherry Markson, thank you very much for your time. Thank you, Andrew.